Welcome back. Today we are going to talk about risk parity portfolios in a very general context where there are n components in the portfolio. We start with portfolio variance, which is an expression that we've already looked at several times, given by the sum of Wi, Wj, sigma ij. We typically break it down into two parts. The first part is Wi squared times sigma i squared, which is the contribution that comes from the variance of each component. And then we have the covariance terms, the overlapping terms, which is Wi, Wj, sigma ij. And what we do is we look at the contribution of each asset as being asset i, as being the one that comes from Wi squared sigma i squared. That's the pure contribution coming from the variance. And then we also take into account the part of the overlapping components where uh, the, the asset i is involved in this uh, correlation or covariance with other components. That gives you the contribution of asset i to the risk of the portfolio. And then the effective number of correlated bets is just like the ENC measure, one divided by the sum of the weight squared. But in this case, it's applied to the PI. So it's 1 divided by the sum of the PI squared. Now, everything is in place and ready for us to be able to introduce the risk parity portfolio. Well, the risk parity portfolio is a portfolio which is such that portfolio weight WI has been chosen so as to equalize risk contribution PI. Or, equivalently so as to maximize the effective number of correlated bets. So what we impose, what we're trying to accomplish is that PI, which is given by the expression that we saw before, is equal to 1 over n for all assets. So a risk parity portfolio is an equally weighted portfolio, but not in terms of dollar contributions, equally weighted in terms of risk contributions. Now, except in the case of two assets or except in a very specific case where all uh, assets have the same pairwise correlation, we have no analytical expression for the portfolio weight Wi that uh, generate this risk parity portfolio. We just need to use some kind of numerical approach, numerical optimization approach. And I refer you to the corresponding lab session where you know, my colleague Vijay will tell you about how to implement this risk parity portfolio. Uh, using Python. Now, a few uh, comments about the risk parity portfolio and comparison with the equally weighted portfolio. So, equally weighted portfolio is a max ENC portfolio, max effective number of constituents, while the risk parity portfolio is a max effective number of correlated bets. In both cases, we have to keep in mind that these are naive diversification strategies. We're not trying to maximize the sharp ratio. We're just trying to go equally weighted, well-balanced portfolios, but either in terms of dollars or in terms of risk contributions. Well, it turns out that risk parity portfolios are extremely popular in practice because they have found to be extremely efficient at delivering high risk-adjusted performance. To see this, let me just give you an example of a cap-weighted uh, portfolio which is based on the US large cap universe from 19, January 1987 to 2018. So we're looking at the 500 largest cap stocks in, in the US on that period of time. Now, if you look at the cap weighted portfolio, where the weights are proportional to the market cap, what you find is annualized performance is 9.7%, volatility is 15%, max drawdown 50%, huge max drawdown, well, that's uh, clearly uh, 2008, the subprime crisis, where there was you know, a big drop in equity markets, and you get a sharp ratio of 31.7%, an average ENC of 27%, and an average effective number of correlated bets of 23%, suggesting that this portfolio is pretty concentrated both in terms of dollar contribution and in terms of risk contribution. If now we switch the exact same universe, but then the weights are given to be risk parity weights. They are chosen to uh, achieve risk parity. Well, what we find is we find a higher performance, 11.8%. It's about 200 
basis points to percent higher performance, we find about the same volatility, actually slightly lower volatility. We find a much better max drawdown, 36.9% as opposed to 50%. We find a higher sharp ratio, which is not surprising given a better performance and a lower volatility. And we also find, obviously, a more balanced portfolio in terms of dollar allocation. In this case, we're 43.7%. But we also find, by construction, that the effective number of correlated bets is now equal to 100%, as it must be, since we're looking at the risk parity portfolio. Well, if you think about these risk-adjusted or risk-return parameters, they would eventually translate into a much better performance over time so if you were to hold that portfolio and start with $100 at the uh, start of the period, with the cap-weighted index, you end up with $1,500, which sounds like a big improvement. Yes, that's a very long period of time. But in now, if you start allocating the same amount, $100, at the same time in the uh, uh, risk parity weighted version of the same portfolio, well, then you ended up at $8,000, so more than four times higher uh, portfolio value. Wrapping up, well, uh, risk parity portfolios are extremely popular portfolios in practice. It has been found that uh, weighting st stocks and asset classes uh, in such a way that the, uh, all these components contribute to the same, uh, in the same way to the risk of the portfolio, it has been found that this is actually an extremely efficient way to uh, produce risk-efficient portfolios.